Hi everybody. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you how to use OpenAI API and speech recognition from the browser in order to interrogate ChatGPT by using this interface. All the code that I'm going to show you was created by ChatGPT. I'm going to show you here all the, the questions that I asked in order to create all of this. You can see here, can you please create a web app that uses text-to-speech API? You must use the user's mic to transform the speech to text. The text should be inserted in a text box, box which is placed in a form with a submit button. Clicking the submit button makes an AJAX call to a Node.js API. The Node.js API calls OpenAI GPT, passing the text from the text box and returns ChatGPT response to the client app. And you can see here that it suggests me the structure of the code to create a client folder and place all this code in, inside. Then this HTML, style CSS, and main.js where to set all the JavaScript. You can see here that it created the HTML, HTML content. The CSS, and you can see that the CSS was truncated. So I asked him to recreate only the, the styles.css because there is a certain amount of tokens that can be returned by ChatGPT, and sometimes the response is truncated. So it generated the CSS for me again. So I have to ask him every time that the response is truncated to regenerate just the last part so that I can get so the, the piece of code that I'm missing. Like in here, you can see that it stopped when it was adding the event listener to the result. And you can see here that we have the speech recognition API from the browser, the object window. By default, we have the US language, but we could create a combo box to select the language from the combo box. This is a si simple example of how to use this uh, speech recognition API. And I asked him to recreate the whole code. I copied the whole code here. You can see where we call the server API chat GPT method passed, and then we stringify the text that we're going to pass to the JSON API developed by chat GPT in Node.js. Then I asked him to create the Node.js with uh, Fastify. You can see here, can you create a Node.js backend API by using Fastify that resists the chat input and sends it to the chat GPT open AI? You can see that he knew that the server was going to receive the text message. And so we create the fast, Fastify post so that we can receive the request by post. It included all the files here that I transform later on by using ES modules instead of require. And you can see here the whole code, how it stringified the request. And also the endpoint, even though I included the library, the OpenAI Node.js library, at the end of the code that I'm going to show you after we see all these prompts. So you can see here the rest of the code because it was truncated and everything was created by almost 100% of the code. So I asked him again, you can see here, to regenerate the last piece of code that it didn't create. And you can see here is all my talking to ChatGPT to recreate the code. At the end, I asked him to create also a Docker Compose file so that I can have some containers for the Node.js web, another one for MongoDB because I wanted to store all the requests and responses from ChatGPT so that I keep track of all my questions. I, I don't have to interrogate ChatGPT again if I forget some piece of code, if I didn't copy some of the code or some of the questions. Then I have a backup on MongoDB locally in order to save this chat. Okay, here you can see the whole file, the MongoDB, the web app with Nginx to serve this API, this single page application that it created. So I'm gonna show you here. This is the, the simple code that it created. And then I added a little bit of HTML and CSS just to organize a little bit these buttons and also the possibility also to transform the response 
from text to speech so that if you want to listen to it, you can listen to it also. So now it's not gonna allow me for sure to record and to dictate what I want because I'm using the microphone now. I can give it a try, let's see. Hi, ChatGPT, are you online? Okay, you can see here that it, it copied, the code copied what I spoke into this text, uh, text area. I'm gonna change here what it didn't understand, understood. Then I'm gonna click submit. I'm gonna also enable text to speech so that you can listen to the, to the text to speech once the response comes back. I'm gonna click submit. You can see there is a loading spinner that it was created. And you can see here the test, yes, I'm online. How can I assist you today? And okay, if I then reset here, I can ask him, could you please suggest a title and a description for YouTube video about or I can tell him, personate YouTube expert. And then could you please suggest a title and description for a YouTube video about using chat GPT speech to text and text to speech. API using Node.js backend API Mongo GB to store chat GPT responses. Okay, I'm gonna click submit. And you can see here the response, I gotta set the height of this diff a little bit higher so that we can have the whole response. But you can see here that I have all the test. You can see. And let me copy again and let me change just the code. Let's take a look at the code that he created. You can see here that everything that he did ask me to do, I did it. And here we have the client, we have the HTML, we have the style CSS. It even created the the CSS for me in order to show the spinner and I just had to go to the code here and just show the spinner here. You can see here where I get reference to the spinner by using document query selector here. And then I reset the display so that it's shown. And as soon as the response is back, I hide the, the spinner here. And you can see here that we get the response into this diff. And then we transform the response to JSON. Then we get, we get access to message and then to the content that I return from the Node.js application. And then I'm gonna concatenate the content here in this output div. And if this query selector is checked, then we speak through the, the speakers, the text that it was returned. You can give a try to the code. I'm gonna share this small application with you so that you can give it a try and see by yourself that is the browser speaks the content that was returned by the API. Okay, so here I have the style and I have to give, okay, this is my mistake because the height was supposed to be 400 pixels and overflow auto. And I'm gonna show you here the backend API here and you can see there's all the code now is in one file because this is just a demo that I created. And justify course in, in order to enable the AJAX call to this web server. Here is my open API key in order to interrogate the open API endpoints. I created an instance from the open API class. And then of course, there is the connection, the string connection to the MongoDB. 
And then, of course, here there is the connection in order to have an instance of the client to the MongoDB library. I create here a database called ChatGPT. And then here's the function that I call if whenever we hit this endpoint. It could be through get or it could be through post, both. I read the text here from the request body. This one was created by ChatGPT, of course. I only isolated this piece of code here inside a function. And there's the response. It's pretty simple. API, and here you can see when we start the server that we connect to the DB, and then we away for Fastify server to go on. And that's, that's it, that's all. And then we start the server here. And here you can see the Docker Compose to have everything containerized. We have a container from MongoDB with exposed port. We have a web container with Nginx to serve this static uh, content. And we have the Node.js app here, you can see. We're mapping the API folder to app. And then there's the npm install and npm run star in order to run, run the server. You can see that everything is working. If I take a look here at the MongoDB database, you can see this is the last request that I made. And you can see here, this is the, the date that it was added. This is my text. You can see that I added the text here, both the question and the answer could just separate. So you can see here, this is the, the question that I asked, impersonate, YouTube expert, etc. And here you can see the response. How to build a chatbot with ChatGPT, speech to text, all the description. And let's reload the, the code. Let's, let's paste again the request so that you can see. It's not so fast to respond, even though I have a paste subscription. And here you can see, this is the title. And then we can interact, for example, I can ask him to, could you also create the tags? Okay, let's wait for the response. Okay, it, in this case, by calling the API, it didn't remember the, the last question. But for example, we can take here the content from the description. Is that for this description of a YouTube video? Okay, and you can see here all the tags. Of course, we can go to the Open API documentation and see how we can keep track of the conversation. If there is an ID that we can pass and keep track of the conversation so that it keeps track like we did here, that, that I can ask questions related to this chat that we're having together. So guys, this, this tutorial was just to show you how you can use ChatGPT to help you write your code. For example, if you didn't know how to create something with the speech uh, to text or text to speech, then you know how to do it with ChatGPT. Of course, you have to have the knowledge. You have to go to the documentation. You have to organize the code, but at least you have a minimum viable product and you can get some help from ChatGPT to write your code. But of course, you gotta know how to program you got to understand if the code is right or wrong and you can tweak it or change something so that it's more efficient or more up to date because the content from ChatGPT is from 2021 and we are now in 2023. But you can see that it's a great help for us in order to avoid writing, I mean, boring stuff that ChatGPT can create for us. And we're only the orchestrator of what we want to do. Okay, so from this piece of code, then I can go on and organize the code, sexy it up so that the app, it, it's more beautiful. But this is, I mean, minimal, minimum viable product that I can text, see that it works. And then I can use as, as an app where you can talk through your microphone 
with your mobile phone and then you can interrogate GPT without having to type in your text. Okay, see you in our next video. Bye.